What is going on, everybody? It is me again. It's HorrorFan34, and welcome to another video. And welcome to day 30 of the 31 Days of Horror Challenge in October. <clears throat> now that we are getting on to day 30 of the challenge, uh, I figured I'd talk about <clears throat> another film that doesn't really get talked about that much. Uh, it's another Wes Craven film which I actually reviewed one of Wes Craven's films in the marathon, which is The Serpent and the Rainbow, which is my favorite Wes Craven film. And this one, though, <clears throat> I think it's a pretty uh, decent, solid flick. It was made in 1981, and I don't own it, surprisingly. I, ne I need to get it still from my uh, Wes Craven collection. <clears throat> still getting over allergies, so I apologize for the coughs, but... uh. But that review is going to be on a film called Deadly Blessing. Now, like I said, Deadly Blessing was a film that was released in 81. Uh, <clears throat> now, Wes Craven, around this time, had done, you know, Last House on the Left from the 70s and the original Hills of Eyes. And this was around the time when Wes was really down in the dumps, pretty much, because he had to have work in a couple years. And then around the same time as this one, Swamp Thing didn't do that well. This really didn't do much of anything. <clears throat> he pretty much did Hills of Ice Part 2 for a paycheck. And it wasn't really until Elm Street that he started to get the ball rolling again. So this was around the time Wes Craven really was kind of getting, you know, it was kind of difficult for him to get work. <clears throat> but I feel like this is one of his more underrated movies. I wouldn't say that it's... a um, a true masterpiece of Wes Craven. I still think, you know, when it comes to, like, Wes Craven films, <coughs> I apologize for the allergies. Uh, when it comes to, like, Wes Craven films in general, I mean, I love The Serpent and the Rainbow is my favorite. I love Shocker, Elm Street, the Scream movies, especially the first one. Uh, I mean, what else did he do? Oh, the, uh, the the people under the stairs. That's a that's a great one. <clears throat> I mean, I I like those more than this one, but I still think this is a decent, solid flick. Now, Deadly Blessing. Uh, basically, the idea, it's a, it's it's got a pretty interesting cast. Well, you have Ernest Borgnine, may he rest in peace, from the original Poseidon Adventure. A lot of other stuff. <clears throat> also, in a supporting role, you have Michael Berryman from the original Hills of Eyes. Uh, Sharon Stone. I think it was her first film she ever did. It was one of her first things ever. Sharon Stone, a very young Sharon Stone. <coughs> and there's a couple of other people. Uh, Jeff East, the young Clark Kent from the original Superman. He has a role in this as well. And uh, the basic idea is that, you know, our two leads of the film, uh, you have a wife and a husband, and the husband used to be part of this, like, community called I think the called the Hemorites or something like that where it was like a sort of like an Amish group but then you know <clears throat> he kind of broke away from it because he didn't really believe in technology and things like that and then slowly there's a murder mystery going on and among this community and the, the husband ends up dead and his uh, wife <clears throat> and her two friends one of them is Sharon Stone and they begin to realize there's, there's like a little mur murder investigation going on. It's kind of like the whole mystery of who the killer is and things like that. Now, it's one of those uh, murder mystery kind of like movies. And I think it's a solid one. Uh, I think it's very well directed by Wes Craven. It's pretty decently shot. <clears throat> uh, the musical score is actually done by a... <clears throat> <coughs> Uh, the musical score is actually done by James Horner, uh, the, the late great James Horner. Uh, one of his real early scores, way before he did Aliens and all that stuff, was doing a film like this. And... <coughs> but... I think the score is pretty decent as well by James Horner. <coughs> Apologize for the allergies. Been sneezing all day fall allergies <coughs> excuse me but uh and the cast does a really good job as well I mean Ernest Borgnine's always great to see Ernest Borgnine Michael Berryman's always good Michael Berryman uh really cool to see Sharon Stone in a very early role 
way before she broke it with like Basic Instinct and Sphere and a lot of other stuff in Casino. It was really cool to see her in an early role. <clears throat> and like I said, the musical score is pretty decent by James Horner. And he got some really good creepy scenes in it. I mean, the, the most effective creepy scene in the whole movie deals with Sharon Stone. <coughs> <coughs> deals with uh <coughs> my throat's giving out I'm sorry but uh it deals with uh Sharon Stone uh it's a dream scene with Sharon Stone and then it's it's on the theatrical poster of the film the original cover art of the film where you see two hands kind of grabbing Sharon Stone's face and she's lying down in the bed and her mouth's open, and then a, a spider gets dropped into her mouth. A really creepy scene. It really always gets me every every single time. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> really good creepy scene in the movie. And uh, another really good scene in the film as well was when Sharon Stone goes into like this barn, and you see the doors close behind her. As she feels like she's locked in there, she can't get out of there. <clears throat> really good scene as well. And uh, another really cool scene in the film is where kind of Wes Craven kind of did this in like Elm Street in the bathtub, where like in the original Elm Street, the Freddy glove came out and between Heather Langenkamp's legs in the bathtub. In this one though, it's a snake that comes out of the bathtub. <laughs> And it's a snake that comes out of the bathtub this time instead of just Freddy's glove. <clears throat> so I think Wes kind of got a little bit of an inspiration from this film to do the uh, bathtub scene from the original Elm Street. <clears throat> That's a really good scene as well. And <clears throat> I will admit the twist is pretty cool. The twist of who the killer is. The only thing I don't like about this film is the way it ends. And I know it's one of those films too. <laughs> where Wes Craven was forced to do an ending that he didn't want to do. And Wes Craven always kind of got stuck doing that. I mean, with the with Elm Street, Deadly Friend, this film. He was always <clears throat> forced to do these really shitty endings that he didn't want to do. So, I mean, the ending to this film really does suck. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't like the way it ends. Because it kind of defeats the whole purpose of the movie in the first place. <clears throat> when it comes to the plot. But other than, like, the ending I didn't really care for. Everything else is pretty solid. I mean, the cast does a good job. Like I said, Ernest Borgnine, Michael Berryman, Sharon Stone, Jeff East. <clears throat> Very well directed by Wes Craven. Uh, it's got decent musical score in there. It's got some really good scenes. It's got some really good effects too with the snake and the spider. Things like that. It's a really good uh, slow burn sort of like... Uh, murder mystery so that's all i'm going to really say about deadly blessing but hope you guys enjoyed this thank you very much for watching and uh i will see you guys next time